literally ask what's in your bank account, what's in your bank account, how much do they make, and they just go off of numbers. What is up fam? It is Shar and welcome to Law Live in Color where I provide quick tips and experiences on the law school process and legal field as a person of color. So in honor of those that are currently in the cycle now um, who are waiting decisions because they might have took my advice and applied early and are still waiting for their tests back or about to take their test to apply early, you most likely are waiting for decisions and you most likely will receive an interview request from at least one of the schools that you've applied to. Now this varies by school. Some schools do not um, require or offer interviews, but you most likely will get at least one. Um, and I wanted to share some advice on how I got through my interviews, what I did, how I looked, and the type of interviews that I had. First things first is what to wear and how to look. So I treat I treated all of these interviews like a job interview. I pretty much showed up business professional. Um, all of them were on Zoom, and I'm assuming that you know all of y'all's will be on Zoom or on some type of digital format. Essentially, what I wore was what I would wear to a job interview. Um, I do have short hair, so I just made sure my hair was neat. I made sure I got a haircut for those interviews. I wore a very conservative top, either a blouse or a button up, but made sure my chest area was covered. If you're a man, I definitely recommend you know wearing a suit and tie um, with a blazer. Um, and, and, and I would say suit and tie because of the fact that, yes, be fully dressed. Just because it's Zoom call, please, please do not wear pajama bottoms. You just never know what might happen. You may have to get up during the interview at any point in time. And if they see you wearing pajama bottoms with a nice top, you know, they might not, you know, take it as seriously, think you're taking it as seriously as you should be. Um, so just in case that may ever arise, just wear fully dressed as if you were there with them in person. If you wear a lot of jewelry. I would limit the amount of jewelry that you do wear for these interviews. I'm not saying that you have to remove your nose ring or anything like that, but if you have like, you know, a ton of ear piercings, maybe just limit it to like a couple. I definitely wouldn't recommend wearing something like hoops, wear studs if you are going to wear jewelry. Um, so just look pretty conservative. Again, just look how you would look in a job interview. So I've broken these interviews down to like three types. So when you have a pre-recorded interview um, in which you're not really talking to an admissions counselor in real time, you're talking to a pre-recorded admissions counselor and you're given question prompts, then you have a real time admissions and interview where you are talking to an admissions, either the Dean of Admissions or uh, just an admissions counselor. And then you have a scholarship interview. Some schools do this and during the decision process or most of the time they do it after they have already given you your decision. Um, Duke, for example, um, offers a scholarship interview post acceptance. The first type is the pre-recorded. Now, this is not my favorite. Um, UT Austin was actually uh, the school that offered um, me and of course others, uh, the pre-recorded Kira invite. It's like a Kira interview, that's the host of it. And basically what it was is they would give you like a practice set and you would just pretty much, um, they would give you the question, they give you 30, 30 seconds to a minute to answer, to think of the answer, then they would answer it, but that was just the practice, it didn't actually count, like they didn't actually see those. I highly recommend doing that. It just gets you adjusted to the type of interview that it's going to be. Don't skip that and go right into the main questions. Definitely do the practice questions just so you can warm up a little bit and you know what to expect. They do only give you a certain amount of time to do the interview, so once they offer it to you, you only have like about a week or two to do that. So make sure you segment out a part of a day where you can really dedicate time to the interview and really just get ready for it. As far as prepping for it beforehand, there's not much to prep for. I will say um, the questions are pretty much, they have like outside of the box questions, like, you know, just very interesting questions that have to do with your leadership or how you problem solve, things like that nature. Um, they'll ask you like what your hobbies are. So that's more about like about you type of questions, which they will ask. And then there's, you know, why us? Why are you interested in coming here? Now, if you've already written a YX essay, please don't regurgitate that essay. <laughs> uh, try to um, do a little bit more research beyond that and, and, and say things that you may not have mentioned in your why 
this school essay and say it to them in, in on the video. Last thing about the pre-recorded interviews, they do offer, not everyone does, but UT Austin did have a writing prompt at the end of the interview in which they will give you a prompt. You have 30 seconds to a minute to prepare for it. And then you have, I believe like a couple minutes to answer it. The biggest thing here is answer it to your best ability. You are being timed. Um, so your spelling shouldn't suffer. Um, if you have time to spell check, please make sure you do that. And then we have in live interviews where you're talking to the admissions counselor or the dean of admissions via Zoom call. And I would say the same advice and how you go about the pre-recorded ones, look the part, you know, just like you're going to actual job interview. For in live interviews, it's a little bit different because you're able to exude your personality a lot more. And I will tell you, please exude it. When you're talking to a person on Zoom, it's a lot more natural and it flows a lot more. So just let it flow. Um, my biggest advice is just be yourself in these interviews. Again, they'll probably ask you similar questions as to why this school, uh, what you're interested in. Sometimes they'll ask you what you participated in while you were in college, if you participated in any organizations, what you look for in a, in a law school. So the last type of interview that you most likely will encounter during your cycle this year is a scholarship interview. Now this will happen later towards the Scott cycle. So all these interviews will most likely happen later. Um, that's just because it's determining the decision. So as like last year is very competitive, like I predicted this year probably will be again. So people won't be receiving decisions until a little bit later than usual. The point of the scholarship interview and the reason why I honestly love uh, the fact that Duke offers it is like another thing that I love about Duke. Um, but that some schools offer it is because it gives more insight to the school. You know, a lot of schools will just take your FAFSA. So they'll take what the government deems as your um, contribution to the school potentially. Um, but they won't really know the whole of your circumstance. You can't really say that on FAFSA. If you've ever completed a FAFSA before, they don't ask, what are your circumstances? They just literally ask what's in your bank account, what's in your bank account, how much do they, do they make? And they just go off of numbers. So in these types of interviews, I really, really stress to not regurgitate your personal statement, your diversity statement, your YX statement. In these interviews, do not regurgitate anything that, that you've already given to them. Remember, this is what they're trying to, they're trying to make a decision based off of, okay, what else is there to you aside from what you've given in your application? That is the biggest thing. Give them something they don't already have in front of them and you'll do wonders in the interview. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, please like, comment, and subscribe. As always, please go in the link in the description below and click my TikToks um, or my Instagrams. I do post helpful tips on my Instagram page. And as always, I post a problem on my TikToks. So if you're having any LSAT struggles, you could always go on there. I also have my personal TikTok on there if you wanna get some laughs. I don't know, I don't know if I'm too funny, but hopefully you can judge that yourself. And of course, I have to end things off with a quote. In the words of Arundhati Roy, there's no such thing as the voiceless. There are only the deliberately silenced or the preferably unheard. Peace, guys.